Hello everybody, I hope you guys are locked in and ready for my September unboxing because it is quite a big one. We do have, I think, pretty much the usuals and then one special edition set. So I will, as always, run through them very quickly for you. Some of them were sent to me as rec packages and some of them I paid for myself. Now I do have two Illumicrates here. I'm pretty sure that one of them is actually the Afterlight. So I am a rep for Illumicrate. If you are unfamiliar with them, they are a UK-based bookish subscription box where every month you get a brand new hardback in an exclusive edition, usually fantasy or sci-fi and a selection of bookish goodies and if after watching this video you would like to get your hands on your very own Illumicrate you can use my code BECCA5 to get a discount on a three or six I struggle with six then month subscription. The Afterlight is by Illumicrate but that is a subscription that I pay for myself. It is a bi-monthly romance subscription where you get a brand new romance release in an exclusive edition and two I think self-care items, so like fandom neutral. I think, I suspect that they ran out of Afterlight boxes, so they sent two Illumicrates, but I have like no idea <laughs> which one is which. I am also a rep for Fairy Loot. Fairy Loot are also a UK-based bookish subscription box company. They have a young adult and an adult box. I am a rep for both, so they were both sent to me by Fairy Loot to open for you guys. Thank you very much to Fairy Loot for that. The YA box has a brand new hardback release in an exclusive edition. Most often it is fantasy and you have once again a selection of bookish goodies. The adult box is of course a adult book, usually fantasy, and that one is book only so you just get a hardback release in an exclusive edition with that one. I do also have a special edition set from Fairy Loot that I ordered a very very long time ago. I believe that they had a few hiccups with getting these to everybody. I did pay for that one myself. We have the Locked Library which is a monthly bookish subscription from HarperCollins. It's their fantasy subscription once again it's book only so it's a brand new hardback release in an exclusive edition and we also have the Goldsboro book for September which I didn't skip because I wanted the book and then I found out that it was the same book as Illumicrate and I don't need two copies of that book unfortunately I do now have two copies of that book and then the last one that we have is a Waterstones order where I also made a boo-boo I pre-ordered two copies of the same book so I'm going to be returning one of those but I do have to open both of them because they're in the same package. So we will kick off with the Illumicrates just because they are in my hands. I will, as usual, chat to this video. So if you wanna skip around, you only wanna see some boxes, you can do that using the bar along the bottom. So this one is the Afterlight. It is the September 2023 box. There are spoilers here, so you can pause them and take a look if you are interested. I will, as usual, be going in blind. I didn't love the last Afterlight box in terms of the items. I don't know, I don't think they do a book only Afterlight, but I would be tempted to switch to it if they did, because I haven't been loving the Afterlight items in the last few boxes. The first thing we have in here is quite a large box. It's quite light though. Oh. Is this a glass tumbler maybe? Oh no, it is a plastic one. And this one says the perfect match. I get a kick out of you. I don't know what this book is because I haven't looked at the spoilers. I do think because there's footballs on the spoiler card. Do you think it might be football related? I don't feel like I'm a fan of that, but that's obviously personal preference. We also have quite a pretty card wallet in here. This has quite a lot of sections in it and it has this green cover and then we just have a letter yeah it is it's a football related romance but we have a letter from the author on the back of this art card and the afterlight book for september is a very pretty color it's a pastel ombre and it is cleat cute by meryl Wilsner. I will overlay the original cover over the top. I don't know what the original cover of this looks like, but I'm assuming that there are some differences. We have the pastel ombre going around under the sprayed edges here. It is, oh, really pretty illustrated M pages that are different on both sides. And we also have foiling under the dust jacket. Now I can tell you that I absolutely would never have bought this because it is football related and I'm not sure how I'm going to feel about it. I will of course give it a try but whether I enjoy it or not is an entirely different matter. So the synopsis on this one says, Grace Henderson has been a star of the US women's national team for 10 years even though she's only 26. But when she's sidelined with an injury a bold new upstart Phoebe Matthews takes her spot. 22 year old Phoebe is everything Grace isn't. A gregarious jokester who plays with the joy that Grace lost 
somewhere along the way. The last thing Grace expects is to become a teammates with benefits with this class clone she sees as her rival. Phoebe is too focused on her first season as a professional soccer player to think about seducing her longtime idol. But when Grace ends up making the first move, they can't keep their hands off each other. As the World Cup approaches and Grace works her way back from injury, the miscommunication leaves the women with hilariously different perspectives on their relationship, but they're on the same page on the field, realizing they can play together instead of vying for the same position. With every tackle, the tension between them grows and both players soon have to decide what's more important, being together or making the roster. The perfect blend of funny and steamy, Meryl Wilsner's cleat cute is about being brave enough to win on and off the field. I don't know if it's for me because of the football, but aside from that, I mean, seems cute. This one must be the September Illumicre. I think after this one, I'm going to open up the Goldsboro one so that we can directly compare the editions of the book. I know what the Goldsboro one looks like, but I have no idea what this one looks like. Oh, the spoiler card has left the building. <laughs> so the theme for this one is My Last Breath. The book for this one is A Study in Drowning by Ava Reed. Here are the spoilers for this one if you want to pause and take a look. And the theme for October is Fairy Tale Forests, which sounds interesting. And this one is for fans of Bitterthorn, The Last Tale of the Flower Bride, Once Upon a Broken Heart, and Cruel Prince. So the first item in the box, oh, it's a new bookish enamel pot. I do really like these as collectible items. They may be my favourite Illumicrate item. If not, they're definitely like way up there amongst my favourites. This one, is this one going to be Dark Academia maybe? I can't remember if I've had a Dark Academia one yet. This one, oh, this one's Gothic Romance. I'm not sure how I feel about Gothic Romance being pink, but I definitely like that the theme is Gothic Romance. So these are designed to look like magical tomes and they are pots and the back says love stories that will haunt your dreams. I love gothic fiction. I'm not a big classics reader but almost all of the classics that I've read and really enjoyed are gothic. We also have oh one of the jigsaws. I do like these as well because I do like a jigsaw occasionally especially if I've got an audiobook going. This one is based on If We Were Villains by M. L. Rio. That is the picture when it's finished. These are also styled like a little book with the jigsaw inside. I went through, was it last summer? I went and did all of my subscription box puzzles. We also have this fabric item. Is this a bowl cozy maybe? It is. So these are for like a hot soup bowl. I believe that they are microwave safe or they should be microwave safe. So you can put your bowl in the microwave, heat your food, and then you can touch this and you don't burn your hands on the bowl. I've got a couple of these, all from different subscription boxes actually. So they're all very slightly different, but they do come in handy, especially at this time of year. The patterns on here, I believe are inspired by Mexican Gothic. We then have this, which feels like it might be a key. Oh, it's a magnet inspired by Belladonna by Adeline Grace. We don't get many magnets in subscription boxes, so that's kind of cool. How is this stuck on? No, but seriously. Oh, it's like, is it glued on? I should have showed you guys first, but I'm curious. Yeah, it's glued on. This one says, in the window, kissed by death. Quite a cool alternative, I feel. Magnets instead of pins, because I have tons of pins now. And magnets, I guess, are a little bit different. We also have, oh, this one is a QR code for an extract of Lady Macbeth by Ava Reed, which is actually only out in August, 2024. So that's pretty cool. And then we just have the book. I think. As I said, the book of September for Illumicrate is A Study in Drowning by Ava Reed. I believe that this is a Dark Academia book. That's pretty much all I know about it. I do know that Ava Reed's books are generally well loved. I will overlay the original cover over the top so that you guys can see the difference. Although to me, it does look pretty similar. We do have a very pretty sprayed edge on here, a laser printed edge. And then, oh, the style, the art style of these end papers is reminding me a little bit of Wuthering Heights. They are the same on both sides. Under the dust, oh, that's really pretty. Under the dust jacket, we have this printed hardcover, which kind of looks like a textbook almost, or like a, a sketch pad of a, I guess like a scholar. And the book is also signed by Ava Reed as well. So the synopsis on this one is, Effie has always believed in fairy tales. She's had no choice. Since childhood, she's been haunted by visions of the Fairy King and found solace only in the pages of Angerad, author Emrys Murden's beloved epic about a mortal girl who falls in love with the Fairy King and then destroys him. I had no idea that this was about fairies and now I'm slightly more interested than I originally was. Effie's tattered copy is all that's keeping her afloat through her stifling first term at her prestigious architecture college. So when the late author's family announces a contest to redesign his house, Effie feels certain this is her destiny. 
But Horaith Manor is an impossible task, a musty, decrepit estate on the brink of crumbling into a hungry sea. And when Effie arrives, she finds she isn't the only one who's made a temporary home there. Preston Hillary, a stodgy young literature scholar, is studying Murden's papers and is determined to prove her favourite author is a fraud. As the two rival students investigate the reclusive author's legacy, piecing together clues through his letters, books and diaries, they discover that the house's foundation isn't the only thing that can't be trusted. There are dark forces, both mortal and magical, conspiring against them, and the truth may bring them both to ruin. Not actually what I expected this to be. I thought it was Dark Academia. That's literally Literally all I knew. Everything else about this synopsis has completely taken me by surprise. I'm really intrigued to see whether I'm going to enjoy this one or not actually. So let me know down in the comments what your favourite item from this month's box is. For me it's probably this but I will also get some use out of the bowl cozy as well. Next up, as promised, we'll do the Goldsboro book. The Goldsboro subscription is once again, this one is their fantasy and sci-fi one. They do have a literary fiction one as well. And you get assigned a numbered first edition of all of the subscriptions I currently have. This one is the most exclusive. And as well as that, you get, I think, 15% off all of Goldsboro's sci-fi and fantasy releases, which as somebody who reads a lot of fantasy and sci-fi, I gotta say that is pretty handy and quite a nice perk. Oh, this one is very different. This one's red, which I completely forgot about. And it's also like just foiled onto the hardcover. It doesn't have a dust jacket. The edges on this one say the only enemy is the sea. And this one is, num oh, this one is number 1,538 out of 2,000. These are the two editions. I personally think I like the Illumicrate one a little bit more just because I, I mean, look at the room that I'm in, you can tell that I like blues more than I like reds. So yeah, we'll see if I enjoy it. I doubt I will need two copies of it. I don't anticipate loving it enough to need two copies, but we can always be surprised. Next up, we'll do the Fairy Loops. We'll start off with the YA box. I, I think this was the last thing to arrive, so I don't think I've been spoiled for this book at all. But you know me, even if I was, I wouldn't remember. But oh, this one has a blanket in it already. I do need. Oh, this is all very exciting. I've seen pretty much everything, but I just want the spoiler card. So the theme for this month is invisible truths. Here are the spoilers if you would like to pause and take a look. First off, as I said, we have a Shades of Magic blanket. The Fairy Loop blankets for my personal use are a little bit small, the same with all subscription box blankets. But I do use them for the pets. So Brie has a couple, Hamilton has a couple. So they do definitely come in handy for me. But this one says as Travars on it. I'm pretty sure I have a Illumicrate Shades of Magic blanket as well. And we have representation of the four different types of London on each side here, which is in keeping with the plot of the book. We also have, these are really cool actually, these are travel bottles. So for when you're going on holiday, so you can put your larger toiletries into smaller ones just to travel. These ones are inspired by Fourth Wing as well. The Infantry Quadrant. Oh, the whole time I was reading Fourth Wing, I couldn't figure out or couldn't remember what the Fourth Quadrant was, but obviously there's four because it's a quadrant. It's the Infantry Quadrant. Quadrant. but then there's also the healers and the scribes these are really handy unfortunate timing for me because i'm now like you know i've done a lot of traveling this year but i'm now in the uk until february so i will get some use out of them then but i could have done with them like a month ago i like when subscription boxes include like genuinely useful items we also have oh a reading light this is the one more chapter reading light does it take batteries does it have batteries in it oh <gasps> Oh, oh, I know how this works. I don't, I'm not getting a battery for it right now, but this may come in handy because let me tell you, Curtis gets frustrated. He can't sleep with any light. Like even my side lamp is too much, but this is one of the ones that you lay over the top of what you're reading. So it lights up what you're reading. That's really cool. I really like that as an item. So far, this fairy loot box is definitely a win. We then have a pin. This one is a Raven pin. This one is inspired by the Raven Cycle by Maggie Steve Arter, which yes, I have still not read that series and then very excited because we have red rising foiled bookmarks i keep saying that i'm not gonna say red rising is my favorite series until the last one's published but let me tell you guys red rising is my favorite series so we have sephiro my boy we have darrow also i would die for this man mustang 
our leading lady. Potentially my favourite character. Oh no, because Cassius exists. I'm sad we have no Cassius here, but my second favourite character is Victra. I almost named Brie Victra. I'm glad that I didn't because Victra is quite like loud and out there and Brie is actually, for all she's bouncy, she's very timid. <laughs> So I don't feel like it would have been fitting, but I very nearly did. I love these. This is a very, very strong box from Fairy Lou, and I'm going to struggle to pick a favourite item. We are almost at the book in this one. The only thing we have left are the tarot cards of the month. In every Fairy Lou, you get two tarot cards with the idea that when you have so many Fairy Loots, you will have a full deck of tarot. And these ones, this is cute. These ones are inspired by Addy and Luke from The Invisible Life of Addie LaRue, which is one of my favourite of the Schwab books. And these are the Ace of Moons and the Two of Moons. And then the book of the month, I still have no idea about, so let's find out together. In here, as well as the book in this little pouch, we also have a letter from the author on the back of this art print. We also have the monthly fairy scoop, the bookmark that matches the spoiler card. And the book is by Miranda Sun, and it is... I have contact lenses in today and I still can't read that. I Have To Be Haunted by Miranda Sun. Oh, this is a really pretty cover. It says on the front, your first love will always haunt you. So color me intrigued. We have a real nice printed edge. We have, are they foiled? Yeah, we have foiled end pages. Oh, a printed hardcover. And also reverse dust jacket art if you want to flip that the other way around. So oh, that's really pretty. I really like that art on there. I haven't flipped any of my fairy loot books yet. I'm wondering at what point I'm going to because I feel like some I'm going to flip but I don't know what's going to be the deciding factor of which ones I flip and which ones I don't. I will overlay the original cover of this over the top though if you guys would like to take a look and then we will get into the synopsis because I'm intrigued. Tara's just trying to stay on top of all her classes, excel at her extracurriculars and prepare for college, which means not speaking to the dead, an ability she inherited from her grandmother. Ghosts are trouble and Kara doesn't need to add their problems to her own. But then she stumbles across the body of Zach, the super popular but very newly dead high school golden boy in the woods. And guess what? He wants her to resurrect him. Cue trouble. Miranda's son's debut touches on the power and conflicts of mother-daughter love. First row romance and finding your place in the world while honouring your culture. Full of heart, humour and thrills. If I have to be haunted we'll put a spell on you. That actually sounds really cool. I'm really intrigued about this one. So down in the comments let me know what your favourite item from this Feral Loot box is. I'm not sure I can pick a favourite. I think that this was a very very solid box. I mean emotionally my favourite is going to have to be the Red Rising bookmarks because we all know that I'm a simp for Red Rising. But I also think that this is a really cool item. I really like that these have been included and I'm also very excited about the Read and Light as well. For the Adult Fairy Loot, oh this is very green. Do we have a theme card in here or is this a letter from the author? We'll find out. This is a letter from the author on the back of an art card. And which way do we go? This way. The book of the month is, oh, is this the theme card? It is. The theme is Beneath the Mask. And the book is Son of Blood and Ruin by, oh, Marily? Marily Lores. I probably have butchered that. Before I read it, I will look up a pronunciation. This one has very pretty art on it. I'll overlay the original cover over the top so you guys can see the difference. We have a very pretty bird printed on the pages, illustrated end pages, also signed, and the end pages are different on each side. Under the dust jacket, very pretty foiling and also a full reverse dust jacket as well if you want to flop that around. I flop. Wow. Flip that around and I also really like the art style on this one as well. It's stunning. Stunning. I might have seen this one briefly on Goodreads but I know nothing about it. The synopsis says the empire of Moctezuma II has long fallen. A city raising on the bones of... I'm gonna butcher every single word in this synopsis and I really apologize. I will um, look up pronunciation when I actually read this and I talk about it in more detail. None dare whisper the names of their gods or speak of the magic that once graced the land, of the witches who hunted as jaguars, the warriors who soared as eagles. Until a new name emerges, a curse on the lips of the Spanish, a hero in the hearts of the people, a master vigilante, a sorceress with a blade. 
Pantera. But that is not her only name. To all who know her, Leonora de las Casas Lazotzen is a glittering jewel of court, promised to the heir of the Spanish throne. The respectable Lady Leonora faints at the sight of blood and would sooner be caught dead than wield a sword, even against a dauntless thief with a cutting smile. No one suspects that Leonora and Pantera are one and the same. Leonora has fooled them all, and with the magic of her ancestors running through her veins, she is nearly invincible, until an ancient prophecy of destruction threatens and she is forced to decide surrender the mask or her life, but the legendary Pantera is designed for more than an early grave, and once she discovers the truth of her origins, not even death will stop her. Interestingly, for some reason this month, this is unusual for me, I feel like I'm more intrigued by the synopsis of the YA than the adult, but this one does also sound super interesting. Oh, we're still on fairy loot so we'll do the special editions. This is one of the ones, you know where like I don't really order special edition sets unless it's a series that I've read and enjoyed? This is one of the ones that I'm taking a risk on, like with Red Rising, like with the Greenbone Saga, which are two series where I did take the risk. I bought an expensive special edition set and I ended up really, really loving them. I'm hoping, praying, that this will also be the case because I have ordered oh, the Poison Study set by Maria V. Snyder. I'm pretty sure I ordered these like last November or something and when there's delays I honestly, I don't really care. I'm not that desperate that I'm going to be upset that they get delayed because I know that I'll get them eventually but I do know that these ones were for sure a long time coming. This one I believe is pretty much a fantasy romance series. A lot of people really love the first book. I have heard that people like the sequels a little bit less and it is also an extended universe. I think the full universe is called like the Chronicles of Ixia or something like that. The thing that sold me because I was unsure about whether I was going to get these I was like maybe I should read because I have the paperbacks of the first three all in mismatching editions that I picked up second hand. So I was like maybe I should read the paperback because I don't know if I'm going to love this. But the thing that sold me on these was the underdust jacket art. It was the naked hardcovers. I saw I saw this art and I was like, no, I got it. Like I'm gonna love this. Like I can't imagine not loving it with that art. So with these, we do have stenciled edges. We have the completely redesigned covers, and we do have the underdust jacket art, which is just it's a printed hardback, pretty much just on one side. Although the marbling or like the smokiness goes all the way around. From what I'm aware of this series, it is about a girl who is supposed to be killed. She's in prison, and she ends up becoming the food tester for the king, where she has to test the king's food for poison. She's also being fed poison, like to build up an immunity to it as well. This one, is this book two? I think book two is Magic Study, maybe? Which has the stenciled edge again, and also the end papers in here are signed, and then more printed covers. Yeah, it goes Poison, Magic, Fire. So book three is Fire Study, the stenciled edge, and is it the guy on this? one it is. I, I'm not gonna lie, it was him. He sold it to me. So next up we'll do the Waterstones. I have two copies of the same book in here and it's not even a cheap book guys. It's not, it's not a, a 9.99 paperback in here. It is a pre-order, it's a brand new release of a hefty hefty book and it's Laura Olympus Volume 5 by Rachel Smith. I have done it in the past with Waterstones where like I've pre-ordered a copy and then they've announced a Waterstones edition and I forgot to cancel my original pre-order. This was literally me accidentally putting to it in my basket and not noticing until the pre-order charge came out of my bank. So I am going to take one to Waterstones to exchange it, so I'll leave that one in the box. But this one is volume five in Laura Olympus, which is a fantasy romance webcomic series. It's a Hades and Persephone retelling, which also contains many of the Greek gods and goddesses. So this one is like, it's a super wholesome retelling in terms of Hades and Persephone. There's lots of mutual pining, lots of longing stares, but it also doesn't shy away from some of the darker aspects represented in Greek mythology, like domestic abuse, sexual assault, toxic relationships. So do be wary of that if you're going in here because it does deal with those. I just love this comic so much. I read volume one and just fell in love and I'm really excited to continue. With it being a webcomic as well, I've actually managed to stay on top of this and actually stay up to date. And then the last thing we have to open, the September Locked Library. Now, I believe that I thought that this was a book that 
the I'm gonna describe it to you because I don't think I can remember the name can I look it up because the internet is at my fingertips so I do have that power I don't remember what it's called or who the author is the library of shadows by Rachel Moore is what I thought this book was going to be I don't actually think it is though I was really happy with the locked library pick so this is Harper Collins fantasy subscription so the books are Harper Voyager and Magpie now Magpie is a very new imprint to Harper Voyager it is the YA fantasy imprint and since they've launched that there has been a lot of magpie books in this subscription i personally would rather have Harper Voyager books. That's the reason why I signed up to this subscription because Harper Voyager is actually my favorite fantasy publisher. A lot of the fantasies I love are published by Harper Voyager. So the amount of Magpie books we've been getting recently isn't to my particular tastes, but I am still really impressed with the additions of the books. This one, oh, this is Laura Stevens' book. I'm pretty sure that Laura Stevens used to be was she a publicist maybe this one's electric monkey as well so this one's ya i don't think she was a publicist actually i think i'm confusing her with somebody else um but this is every exquisite thing by laura steven i will say the lineup of the printing on this is not it like it's very close to this end and it's very far away from this end so it's either been printed wonky or like folded wonky um but the back says girls don't want beauty girls want power i like the pattern like there's a lot of depth in this printed edge which i really like it has a bound in letter from the author also potentially inspired by the picture of dorian gray which is one of my favorite classics once again gothic and under the dust jacket we have some foiling all of the locked library books do also include a ribbon bookmark do you guys like those by the way i find them frustrating because i find that they unravel as soon as you untuck them and they never tuck back neatly so for me they're more of an inconvenience than anything but i know that like obviously it makes the book look bougie if it's got a ribbon bookmark in i'm not offended that it's there i just they're not like a selling point for me i guess but the synopsis on this one says penny paxton the daughter of a beloved icon will do anything to continue her mother's legacy including in at the elite and cutthroat Dorian Drama Academy. When Penny's new mentor offers her the chance to have a portrait painted by a mysterious artist who promises immortal beauty to all his subjects, Penny jumps at the chance to join Dorian's most glittering alumni, knowing that stardom will soon be hers. But then her mentor is found murdered, her portrait violently slashed, and as the bodies pile up, Penny realizes she's made a terrible mistake. A searing and seductive exploration of beauty identity and what the pursuit of perfection can truly cost. So I'm not sure I would say this is a Dorian Gray retelling. I would say it's inspired by because obviously Dorian Gray is within this world. It's not like a retelling if that makes sense. Sounds intriguing. Once again, I am not loving the YA inclusions in here. I just feel like there's plenty of YA boxes out there. I would much rather prefer Harper Voyager heavy books in this subscription as opposed to like Electric Monkey and Magpie. Once again, we have a stack of stunning books. Very excited to get into these. Let me know down in, oops, the comments. What's your favorite edition? I've got the smallest ones on the bottom, which really isn't helping the stability of this stack i will turn it around though so that we can see the gorgeous printed edges i'm not sure if i have a favorite edition this month oh i suppose it would be this one i feel like this is the one out of all of them where the synopsis intrigues me the most actually and i really like the edition on here i don't know whether it's the color palette on it but yeah i would say that this is probably my favorite so down in the comments let me know if you've read any of these books what you thought of them which ones you think i will maybe enjoy on my i think it was my july unboxings somebody put in the comments that they would love to see me do a month of only reading subscription box books i didn't come here to be attacked but i hear you there was a lot of likes on that comment so i'm thinking about it i'm gonna see how big my mandatory tbr is for november and if i've gotten through most of it then we will do potentially aside from my mandatory tbr or subscription box books i heard you guys i'm trying to make it happen the thought is a bit scary and not because i don't want to read my subscription books or anything it's just while i do have special editions i've ordered from subscription box companies that are sequels while some of them are standalones a lot of them are the first books in series and the thought of every book i read in a month being the start of a new series <laughs> 
honestly makes me feel a bit sick but um we'll see don't hold me to it but it's a possibility i also like have thought, thought of a couple of ways to like make it a bit fun as well so we'll see if that happens but thank you once again to all Crate and fairy loot for sending me boxes that i have opened and showed to you guys in this video down in my description box you will find a link to all of the boxes the websites for all of the boxes that i've opened today as well as their social media and any discount codes if i have them but aside from that guys please don't forget to like this video if you liked it subscribe if you wanna and if you head to my description box you'll find a link to my goodreads instagram and twitter if you'd like to follow me on any of those as well as a link to my bookish candle website the etsy for that and a 10 percent off discount code but that's it from me today guys bye oh you bite your friend like chocolate you say you will go where nobody knows with guns in under our petticoats we're never gonna quit it no we're never gonna quit it no